And we're back. It's Talkin' Money with Jeff Tarbell. Yeah, yeah, how you doing? Oh, well, I was going to say, this guy's going to be in town pretty soon, but this is the old guy, not the new guy. Sammy Hagar are coming up. Are you going to that, did you tell me? Yeah, yeah. The grand opening. How'd you get in there? I got my connection. They, they told me this was exclusive. <laughs> I don't want my ticket anymore. <laughs> They'll let anybody in the door. That is coming up. Um, so Sammy Hagar, is it? Two weeks. 15th, is it, or 14th? 15th, 16th, I don't know. Yeah, the, the, the new uh, restaurant. We're going to be... We are going to do a live show from there. Not that day, because it's just so chaotic that day, but we will be out there. A gentleman that I know is uh, one of the partners starting up the, uh, are they calling that the, it's, it's, not a, it's not a Cabo Wabo restaurant, right? No, it's, no. Sammy Hager's rocking something or another. I'll have to get the official name. Though. That'll be fun. Looking forward to that. We did get our uh, our winners there to, what did we give out? Did we give out golf? We did, okay, the Nakoma Golf Resort. So uh, the uh, Jackson Hole or Grand Teton was the correct answer. We got uh Took, I think, one off the text line and a bunch off the phones. So here's my text question for you today. And if you want to call and give us your thoughts and maybe you're in this predicament, that's fine. 339-1140 if you want to jump in there. If you want to just text me your thoughts, whether you're involved or not, at 441140, I want to hear from you. So, and we're getting some text coming in. My, I started the, uh, the program today talking about student loans, and my gut reaction is that that will be kind of the next bomb to uh, – to drop, the politicians will come out and say, we're going to start relieving some of you from from student loan debt, like we have done for homeowners and short sailors and debt modifications and you name it. So 441140, text me, should we allow, should we come up with a program for student loan debt similar to what we've done for homeowners? Either some sort of a reduction in the, how much they owe, a uh, total forgiveness if they can prove some sort of a hardship, you know, should we have? Should there be a program to address the student loan issue? Forty-four eleven forty is our text number. Yes or no? And you can give me a more detailed description, or you can give me sign language there if you want. If you think I'm on, I, I I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying I understand why people are asking for it because everybody else has gotten something free, and I think that it will, as we get closer to the election, be one of those items that comes up. There's and, definitely already a lot of programs deferment wise. A deferment for income, deferment for this, deferment for that. But, yeah, uh, but you still owe it. True. And um, so off the text line, we did get a uh, probably one of our bankruptcy attorneys. No, you cannot get out of student loans with a bankruptcy. So under current rules, you cannot bankrupt a student loan. So that, that then they treat that very similar then to the way they treat the IRS, IRS debt. Right. You can screw everybody else over, but not you cannot them. screw. We screw you. You don't. <laughs> yeah. It only goes one way. We know how to take your money. Don't try to take ours. Um, so that's how that goes. Okay, that makes sense. I, I, that's kind of what I thought. Um, from the 530, Jeff, the future is set up with people already having mortgage-sized school loans, but with nothing backing them, which is true. Uh, a lot more not, may not qualify with their debt-to-income ratio. That's the problem. I mean, that is the problem. So if we want, <laughs> if we want to so, – so here's the question then. This, this leads us to the point. If we want to forgive student loan debt so they can qualify, are we going to give the same person who didn't want to pay us back their student loan, we're going to give them a, a mortgage? That, that is the problem. Because... Or the challenge, I should say. Um, is, that, is that what we want to do? Is that the kind of person who, said, who signed an agreement saying, look, at, you educate me, I'll pay you back, and then I got my education, and I'm not happy with what I got, or I'm not happy with the fact that I didn't get a job, which is not our fault. Um, it's the economy's doesn't help, but maybe you chose the wrong <laughs> wrong education, n- nonetheless. But now do we want to give them back a home loan because now they're, they're debt-free? Yeah, now we're going to wipe out your debt, wait two or three years, and now you can buy a house. Yeah. So from the 916, this one I like, sure, we'll wipe out their, de- their debt if they want to get back their degree. So, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and let's, let's be honest. You, can't, you can have my degree. My degree is probably somewhere in a box because I just moved. And not even a secure box. I, nobody has ever asked me for a copy of my diploma, for a copy of my transcripts. And and qu- quite frankly, I've never had a real job. So <laughs> that could be entirely <laughs> why. Um, I've always, you know, kind of worked on, for myself or on my own. But yeah, I mean, give us, give us your, send us your, uh, your, your master's degree back, and we'll, we'll refund you your money. Ah, okay, 
So we'll let that hang out there for a little bit. And uh, 441140, our question is, is, what should we do with student loan debt? Should we hear from the 530? Yes, I'm willing to do some sort of modification, but not forgiven. And I, I would go for that. And I think there are some plans, as John was just talking about now, that you can uh, ask for a deferment. Um, until you know, until based you're on work- current income, things of that sort. Yeah, of. And, I, and the ones I'm most familiar with seeing are the people that are back in school. You know, so they said, hey, you know, as long as you're in school, you don't. Ha- I, th- I think you can defer the payments, but I don't know. It's a big problem because it's a big debt. Yeah. No, there's some out there right now where, based on your income and your family size, if it's within this tolerance or that, then there's a deferment. And there's a different payment structure. It's very lenient, amazingly lenient. But but not a. Reduction, not a reduction. Not a reduction no. what you owe. No. So if your payments were four hundred dollars a month, they say, okay, send us seventy five bucks right. until you get back on your feet. Okay. Well that might help. Yeah. It w- it'll help a lot, particularly if you're not working right now. You, you know, and you're trying to you're trying to make these payments go along, you're living with mom and dad. It's gonna, gonna be tough. So uh, we'll let that go out there and we'll pick one of our uh, whichever one appeals to me the most, we'll pick them out and give them uh, give them something fun, maybe some gym boys or something like that. I did see this is on the same the same uh, page as the Mr. Bernanke's speech. And, and they're talking about, so keep your eye on, by the way, I won't finish up that thought. Keep your eye on September, September 12th, 13th meeting. So that's two weeks from now. If you, that could be their next time where they could come out and do something about rates. So everybody who's probably waiting, waiting their lock right now is probably going to be, well, I'm going to wait and lock. But keep in mind that. Yeah, between now and then, the, the lenders will change their programs or, well, or rules. What happened this week is that Fannie Mae and Fannie Mae and right. Freddie Mac both uh, increased their, what they call their G fees, their guarantee fees, by a, almost an eighth. And that's the, that's the cost that they charge borrowers for, for selling them loans. And that gets passed right on to the consumer. So yes. other things happen. And this is, a good, this is a good example of when the bond market particularly – in the stock market, both both of them look into the future. You don't have to have an event happen for them for the market to move. This this mere discussion that Bernanke came out and said, you know, I might look at this as an option, turned the stock market in one afternoon plus a hundred. It was down in the other direction, and also turned the bonds around because it, it it just kept pressure down on on rates, which means people will people will keep buying lower rates if they don't think they're going to be higher. Right? You don't you don't right. want to buy something that's going to pay you. One percent. When you think if you waited till tomorrow or next month, you could get one and a half. You'll just wait, or you'll have to start selling one and a half now, right? So the bond market looks into the future, and so this is these are the kind of things that help kind of just keep the pressure down. You don't actually have to have the actual event happen on that day. It'll happen in advance of that. So those are some things we'll keep an eye on. But the next meeting is in a couple of weeks, and we'll do that. Uh, how are we doing on on the time? We didn't take one more break. Oh, you're okay. We go all the way in there. Beautiful. So let's get uh, Mark and Sack. Mark, welcome to Talking Money. How are you? Good morning, Jeff. Hey, I just want to talk uh, talk about the you know the deferment or the modification of mortgages as opposed to you know lowering the debt on a student loan. The difference is obviously on the mortgages. Your mortgage is considered an asset, so there is going to be some value to that uh, to that loan one way or another, as, as opposed to a student loan, which there's really no asset attached to it because you're going to school to in, improve your education, but it doesn't guarantee you a job. So possibly what, what, would, what would be good is, and, and I don't know if you remember this, a few years ago there was a, I think 60 Minutes did a thing on these uh, medical students who actually took out uh, loans to go to medical school who promised to, you know, do work in rural areas to, you know, to help, you know, uh, pay off the loan. Right. And what they did is they went and they set up private practices, and the government has never went after these people. Or they, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, loan, I wouldn't call it fraud, but there's a lot of uh, loans out there that people didn't really, uh, you know, do what they were supposed to do. So maybe deferment would be, but, you know, in this today's economy, you know, who knows what type of uh, you know what type of educa- uh, what type of uh, job this person's going to get and yeah. how, you know be able to afford it to pay back the loan. So, Mark, you're in you're in favor. Your your rule would be to defer them, but not to waive them or reduce them. Oh no, I would not. I would I would not because you know, that the problem with what's going on now is is that somebody's going to have to pay for this in the end. And if you keep if you keep you know going on and and you know, you know, stretch 
switching out loans or, you know, remodifying, eventually somebody's going to have to pay for this in the long run. Yeah, they're called our grandkids and our kids. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because exactly. because as a society, our group doesn't want to take responsibility for anything, so we'll just pass the debt down the down the line, and we have politicians that are willing to go with it, so we'll just keep pushing it down the pushing it down the hole, and one of our kids will choke on it down the down the line. So I, I'm with you, Mark. Appreciate your call very much. That's a good a good one, and I agree that um, there's some some sort of a I don't want to use the word modification, but what you were using the term uh, on the student loans, just kind of a deferment. Right. Uh, it certainly seems reasonable to me. You still owe us the money, but we don't want to Some, tie it to unemployment or something of that sort. There's got to be a way to track it and tie it. That's that's the other challenge. From the 916, when you get a degree, you're in your early 20s, basically a kid. Years later, when you uh, need a home, you're a bit more mature, so home loan's a little bit of risk by a home. Okay. Colleges, public and private, are already, already subsidized. So those who apply and don't dodge the lender work out a deferment, not forgiveness. Okay, so we're getting a lot of stuff on the same line there. So it sounds like no, nobody's nobody's disagreeing with me that they, everybody expects something to, to come out. I don't know if you're if you're a politician, particularly if you are the party in in rule right now and you're losing. If you you know if you're going to pull out, if you need to pull out all guns a blazing to try to save your job, is is uh, I'm going to defer your student loan for another year. Is that is that big enough a big enough wallop to go? Oh, I'm I'm going to vote for this guy because he's going to let me pay it later rather than today. I don't think I, you know. That's to me, not that appealing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not. It's not enough. It's not enough. And when your job is to save your rear end, um, then you're gonna have to pull out all the stops. And I, I think they're gonna do something bigger than that. I just, I just, I see it coming. So we'll see. Yeah, the other challenge is that when they come out with something, but then it gets manipulated beyond what it's supposed to be, and and that just drives it deeper. Well, I think what usually happens is what comes out as a temporary fix ends up becoming a permanent one and then we well, and then you then you become a bad person for trying to for trying to end something you know so so jeff i'm i'm the president i said we're going to do this on a one-time basis only and it, it'll sunset next year and then john's john doesn't vote for it extended so john's a bad guy next year well, how can you're, you're hurting you're hurting students you're hurting kids john you, you're a bad person it's hard once you put something in place it's almost impossible to get rid of it definitely so let's go to uh well so we got ernie Ernie up in Tahoe. What's happening, Ernie? Well, I'm just heading heading to Carson City to do a little baseball tournament. Well, I'm a physician, and uh, when going to school in the late ninth, uh, 1970s, the interest rates with Carter were around 19, 20 percent. Mm-hmm. Uh, though I didn't have any of those type of loans, some of my colleagues have those loans, and they were through the government program, and they would try to work in rural places, uh, and then if they couldn't pay the money back with the high interest rates. Uh, they were actually barred from treating patients in the Medicare program. Wow. wow. Revenue to be able to pay the loans down, so they're barred from it for life until they pay the loans off. So they're not really not gone after. They're just not included and allowed to participate in any federal-type funding programs and such as Medicare, which is huge. Wow. I've never heard that. That's very interesting. Now, now why wouldn't we, in, 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 in an environment of 0% interest rates, why wouldn't we you know, see now there now there's a program where you could you could look backwards and say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna write all these mortgages down to two and a half percent, you know, the rate. So if you're if you're out there carrying this debt, we're gonna give you like a forgiveness program. I know, I mean, Ernie, you probably all your buddies probably would stand up and say, you know, you want to you want to write down a two and a half percent, I'll pay it off tomorrow. Um, right, so but they're, what if they're not allowed to participate in the programs that uh, you know, they help them run they, generate income? Yeah, they're blocked. Yep. They're blocked. Yep. No, I, I. It's a catch twenty two for these guys. It is. Yeah. It is. It's. It's. And so, that was huge. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're, ta- you're talking about never getting a debt to go away. So that's a, Ernie. I appreciate. I'm going to put Ernie back on hold. Um, Grant, go ahead and get his get his name. We'll send we'll send him something to give away there. Oh, you want? He already he already got. Okay. All right. So we got. A, that's a good call. I didn't. And I didn't great. know that. So very very similar to the penalty of uh, walking away from your Fannie or your Freddie loan or your FHA loan. If you don't pay your taxes, you don't pay your student loans. There's they they keep an internal track of you if you're not paying. I didn't I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, if you're if anything regarding the federal, there's a lot of they want their money back, don't oh, they? Yeah, they? And our money too. They know where you live. Well, that's it for the first hour. Wow, really? I did, yeah, <laughs> it's just we got all kinds of stuff to give away when we come back to. We're gonna do some more mountain lions. We're gonna do some more Nakoma golf. We're gonna do what else you got there? We got some uh, mix it up. Mix it up. Gifts, yeah, the beverage rentals. We got all kinds of stuff. So hang around for hour two. 
of two. The last two-hour show of the year. We'll be back to one hour next week. This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fodorero. We're going to be right back. Jack. Yeah.